I took a fucking trip to the airport where he's catching the plane to the CC, where he is now. Very early in the morning. And on my way back, I said, well, I'm going to stop for breakfast. So I stopped at I home. <laughs> the waitress showed me a little booth, usually a little small booth, where there's one sits on each side, and that's about all. I sat down, I ordered coffee, looked at the menu, ordered what I wanted. And so I was waiting, I looked around. The other people were there, some families, and I noticed right in front of me, there was an older man and a young boy. The boy must have been about 12 years old. And I assume the older gentleman was his father. Well, my meal came. I was eating and looking up because like, here I am facing the father with the boy's back to me. And every time I looked up, there's the father with the cell phone. I don't know what he was reading or what he was doing. He wasn't making a call, but he was looking at it for something. Every time. After a while, it started bothering me. And I said, here's this kid squirming around in a seat. Young kid. And this father, not showing him anything. Not showing him any love. I was ready which I did not do. <laughs> well, I was certainly tempted. He got up and grabbed his phone and threw it away and said, excuse me, but this boy, your son, is more important than that you know by phone. <laughs> Much more important. That's being Eucharist to each other. We can stop and realize that the person we break bread with is much more important than our morning newspaper that we sit at the table reading when others are sitting around us. We could say the same thing at Mass. How important is the Eucharist? I see many people bring their little books to Mass and this little talk. We used to do it when we were kids, but when was the Mass? It was in Latin. <laughs> we're reading it in English. That's not the case today. Those little books are wonderful. But that's being prepared. They're there for us to prepare ourselves for coming to Eucharist. We read over the scriptures. And we know what's going to be read. And so when we come here, we don't have anything. We listen. We're not people with newspapers in front of us. We listen to what the lectures are proclaiming. They're proclaiming the word of God. I don't know how many times I have sat in the seat. And I have read the readings the night before and already prepared a homily, particularly on weekdays. And they start reading and something jumps off the page and catches me. I said, why didn't I catch that when I first read it? But I'm listening to them. I'm not reading it from my book. That's the power that exists when we come as family to you, Christian. Look what Jesus did. He prepared the Passover. What did he do? He sat down at the table with his followers. And he took bread. And he broke it. He blessed it. He passed it around. He said, take this. He didn't say, stick your tongue out. <laughs> He said, take this. Take is a verb. It's an action word. Take this and eat it. This is my body. And then, he gave them a chop. Again, he said, take this and drink of it. This is my body, blood which shall be shed for you and for others. That's an action word. And when we sit down, whether we're here or even in our own home, and we sit down to have a meal together with our children, our family, our grandchildren, no matter who they may be, 
We put away all those cell phones. We put away all that other nonsense because what is sitting at us and looking at us just like you are at me tonight. You are the people of God. You are God's children. You are loved by God. You are more important than any piece of machinery or anything else that exists at this moment, at this table, where we share our lives together, the things that have happened and touched our lives that day. We listen to our children, our children listen to us. They're able to ask us questions. They're not on their cell phone or playing some little game. The same thing. You're out driving, trying to show your children around. One parent told me he made sure that his children did not bring any phones or anything like that. He wanted them to see God's nature. And for us to be Eucharistic people and to be, see in each other the body of Christ, we have to find that within ourselves by acting toward others and realizing these are the people who are important. These are the people I am called to serve. You and I will come to this table in a short time to receive the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. We then become tabernacles. Every one of us. Because we now are carrying body of Christ, the blood of Christ within each of us. And if we are carrying Christ with each of us, then we reach out and we say, hey, I'm sorry. I forgive you. You're important to me. <coughs> That's being Eucharist to one another. When we see people, the lowly, who are out on the streets, have no place to go, and if we can help them and reach out to them, we become Eucharist to them because we feed them, we nourish them, not with material things. We nourish one another with what's within us, the Christ that dwells in every single one of us. That's why each of us are important. And there are no exceptions. The Eucharist is the most powerful sacrament that we have because we are being fed by Jesus Christ. I pray for that man. Pray for that man that he comes to the senses and realizes that his cell phone is not important, but his son is much more important. Much more. And we have to come to that realization. When we come here to celebrate, we come to celebrate exactly that. We open our minds, we open our hearts. Our lectors come up and they proclaim the word of God. For us to hear it anew with freshness that maybe we never heard it that way before. This feast is totally unbelievable because of what Christ has given us. This is his love that he's giving to you and to me. It's not a uh, quantitative love or anything like that. It's total love. There's no holding that. It's total love that God gives us. And it's that love that helps us to move from point A to point B to point whatever else is in our lives. Tremendous power in this sacrament that you and I can receive day after day after day. That's why we come together. We call ourselves the mystical body of Christ. We are one in the name of Christ. And we should act and live our lives as one Christian. Many people call, them Christians, call themselves Christian, but if they're not living out the gospel message, 
they're not a Christian. Pope Francis said that himself this week. The gospel's there. The word of God is there. It's free. No charge. The only charge is we take it, we receive it, and then we make it come alive to one another. That's a challenge. Can we do that challenge? Can we accept that challenge? And may Christ come alive for one another.